Hello and welcome back to Pillars. So we are at the Brass Citadel entrance. Just about to check out the whole place. A well-dressed Valiant and and the young uh, but determined guard are arguing by the gate. The Royal Dead Fire Company is a trading company, is it not? And you are on Kahanga soil. You cannot turn me away. Oh, she has fire. The Valiant's words only anger the guard further. Her face darkens and she grits her pointed teeth. The Brass Citadel and the Royal Dead Fire Company operate under the auspices of the Ranga Nui of Rawatai. She straightens, she straightens her shoulders and crosses her forearms over her chest in a stiff salute. We answer to him, not to you. And certainly not to some tribal queen of Nekataka. Let's all take a deep breath. I'm sure we can work this out. Oh, you're one of those. She crosses her arms. <laughs> These Valians are always sending their spies to snoop around. And I won't have it. The guard glares at the merchant even as she speaks to you. The merchant rolls her eyes. And these Rawataians think they own anything they stack two stones on top of. I am here to conduct business, not engage in petty power struggles. If the guard won't let you in, that's that. Oh, I guess this is the time to uh, choose a side, maybe. Let the merchant pass. What? She's up to no good. I know it. I can watch for her, she will make trouble. <laughs> the guard makes a frustrated s sound at the back of her throat. Fine, but if you're wrong, we're gonna have a talk later. She glares at you before nodding to the uh, the valley and on. Agresi, my friend. She doffs her <laughs> head to you before departing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me up! Oh, it worked. Mortar? Recently Green polished. Green islands and blue skies. The locals don't know how good they have it. <sighs> Tomorrow? All this trouble over a tablet of fucking stone. If my company standing wasn't on the line, I would have written this one off as a loss already. Tamara nurses her brow and motions for you to speak. Any ideas on retrieving the Harapo epic? I heard tell of Efren, a thief with a penchant for making house calls. Word has it that Efren made his way inside of Archimere's manor and later died. Now his soul is bound to the fortune telling machine in the dark cupboard. A strange fate. Hmm. Tell me about yourself. I help finance expeditions around the Isles, which often means keeping an ear to the ground. Not very romantic from behind a desk, but Rawatai's campaign could use the extra coin. Alright. <laughs> so, busting inside Archimir's lab is uh, definitely a goal. Shall never bend your backs. No battles break your swords. The Valiant's chair, Hassandos, is quiet from afar. Jeez, man. Lay behind their the, eyes. the guy needs to chill. Their hearts hid treachery. Oh, we can't go down. So, well, I guess I'm gonna go in here. Imperial. Command. Why does your Ranga carve his name into a rock? The Ranga knew it. Sails unfurled and sword held high. To battle for glory. Those gunsmithy? Can we go inside there? I think we can. Uto was recommended to me uh, by one of the merchants in Queen's Birth. Hey Uto, you like weapons? The man greets you with an arm crossed over his chest. He has a, a mass of scar tissue where his left eye would be, and his hands are knotted with bulging tendons. Looking for a pistol or an arquebus? Rawatai makes the finest guns in Aora, and I make the finest guns in Rawatai. What makes your gun so special? Craftsmanship. 
He holds out his uh, knotted hands, keeping them entirely still as he speaks to you. They are covered in small burns and scars that uh, blur the varied pigmentation of his skin. If you ask my superiors at Imperial Command, they'll tell you our main exports are saltpeter and metal. Those are just things. They're prized because of what we do with them. He reaches under the counter and presents a blunderbuss, holding it out for your inspection, which... With, with his ever steady hands, it's a high quality piece. Rawatayan industry is about discipline, precision, mastery of a careful art. Those qualities guide all that we build. It puts the blunderbuss away. Let's see what you get. Dragon's Dowry, Arcubus, legendary one. Scordaus Trophy. Superb one-handed pistol, exceptional blunderbuss. Damn, legendary stuff. That's only a super pistol, legendary arquebus. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I can't really afford that. But I suppose if we keep this in mind. That pistol is not bad either. Anyhow. Bertano, this is the guy we're looking for, right? Beat it. I don't have time to chit chat. The Tim Valiant glances over your shoulder with an expectant frown. You stole a pair of gloves from the dark cupboard. Give them to me. All right. Not a chance, Aimika. He narrows his eyes at you. Fasina sent you, didn't she? Bostenago, just for these. Shaking his head, he pulls a pair of fine gloves from his pocket, studying them with evident disappointment. Soft as down, but not a single fence willing to pay me a fair price. Maybe they've got imp stink all over them. Stoic. Passionate. Rational. You're going to have a hard time selling an Archmage's gloves for fast coin. Or maybe the stink of failure, you know, good thief. Now let's just be rational. Should have guessed these were bad luck. Well, it's too late to go making smart decisions, isn't it? No, it's never too late for that. He opens his mouth to say more, but something to the southwest distracts him, and his expression fills with dread. Here he comes, and I'm too late. If Hamuto doesn't give me an extension on my debt, I'm a dead man. Keep your mouth shut and follow my lead. That might be best. Glance to get you, Bertano shrugs and swallows down a lump of lump in his throat. Uh oh. A unit of uh, steely eyed sailors approach the docks, clutching pikes and firearms with quiet professionalism. At their head stands a tall Omana in mustard yellow uniform. He turns his attention between you and Bertano. So, Bertano, you hired a mercenary, or else a negotiator. That coin should have gone toward your debt to me. Hamuto runs, uh, rubs a long scar that extends the length of his neck. Huh? No, I didn't. Uh, that is, uh, I would never go behind your back. I... Bertano's voice falters and he turns to you with sudden panic. I came for a pair of gloves that Bertano stole. This isn't my problem. What is that? Honest. Bertano, shut up. The adults are talking. <laughs> Hamuto's eyes brighten and he nods. The soldiers around him chuckle with approval. Royal Deathfire Company. Minor positive. I like dealing with people of substance. He nods thoughtfully. This is a private matter. Your interference is unnecessary. Hamuto spreads his hands in 
a peaceful matter as his soldiers level their guns at Bertano. Hmm. Since he can't pay up, take him, it fair is fair. He's coming with me. Hamuto lets out a piercing uh, whistle, several soldiers milling about the area snap to attention and fall into formation around the docks. I salute you for your courage, but I ask you to reconsider your position. He permits himself a very small smile. <laughs> My business is with Hamuto, does anyone think? I would hesitate to go after you next. Several of the reinforcements Hamuto rallied to arms trade uneasy glances. Slowly at first, they lowered their weapons and sheepishly back away from the scene. Cowards! There will be a reckoning for I know each one of your faces. He turns to regard seemingly everyone in the, the district. Like I said, you're not taking him. So we gotta piss off the Royal De Deathfire Company. What is your plan for Bertano? Indentured servitude. I trust this is a more honest and respectable alternative than any pursuit he would take on his own terms. Seraphim snorts through his scarred snout. <laughs> Be calling it whatsoever you like, Captain Cogswallow. But your honest and respectable slavery be slavery all the same. He spits on the ground. Your toy pirate speaks out of turn. I would teach him a lesson if I were you, Captain. He focuses on you, keeping Seraphim in periphery. Perhaps I can pay what's owed. You must care a great deal for this insufferable little worm to stake your purse on his freedom. Hamuto taps his lower lip in thought. Four hundred pyres are what Berteno owes. When I will accept that sum to have this sorry business concluded. Do I want to attack? I don't know what is the right call here. Royal Deathfire Company, we're gonna piss him off. <laughs> Unbelievable. Payment as agreed. 400 copper for the guy, but... You sound more reasonable than I was led to believe. Do I? One can be adherent to the tenets of maritime law and still be seen as a monster. Well, I don't know. So, either paying for him, or not caring and him taken away as a slave, or we killed some guys for him. Let's do it. My friend, look around you. We stand in the shadow of the brass citadel, not some valian den. And Buro gestures with an open palm. Raise your fist and the full force of Rawatai's armada will descend on you. Or back away and live to fight again. No deal, Hamuto. You, look alive. My friend here needs a lesson in humility. Oh, <laughs> I didn't miss. Good to me. Okay. Well, I suppose we don't have to. Blast. That usually what? works. Have a melee weapon equipped. They don't care. Oh yeah. We had that guy charmed. Just kill him anyway. Rest in peace, mate. I, 
I can't believe I'm finally out of debt. Principe San Petrena. My For the first time in my life, I'm free. Slap him. <laughs> Say nothing. Technically, you're indebted to me. Not anymore, I'm not. Here, catch. You give. You have given an item. Brokova fingers. Dexterity, sleight of hand, grand sp spark casters. Okay. It's a new Bertenno all the way. <laughs> Pirate Bertenno doesn't get himself in anyone's debt. Laughing in a full voice, he makes a hasty exit. No problem. Hmm. Fine male armor. Well, we are already making friends here. Orland Peddler. Hello there. Say, you look like you're a long way from home. She smiles amenably. Amiably. I've got all sorts of goods and supplies. Take a look before you head back out. Why are you working at a ro Rotalian? Ra ra what the hell? Rao Outpost. Because I'm from Rawatai. Or, to be more specific, my ancestral home's been part of the Empire for decades. Few generations now. So Rautai. What's like living under Rautaian rule? I don't know. I never known anything else. We've got the Rautaians' fancy new irrigation canals now, and the roads have gotten better. The ones leading into Tokoa, anyhow. She pauses, lost in thoughts and smirks. Funny thing is, the further you go on them, the nicer everything gets, and the more it all looks like this. Doesn't that bother you? She glances around to see if anyone is in earshot. I guess it used to. When I was younger, I grew up hearing stories of the time before from my grandparents. But they were children themselves when Rawatai took over. She frowns at you, thoughtfully. Some wax romantic about the old days. Anyways, I'm just trying to make a living. That's why I'm here, after all. Let's go back That's to business. That's a subject. I really like the Orleans. Anyway, let's see what take you got. That's decent. Health regen per six seconds. Um. Okay. Don't care too much about the gear you're selling. Fleet master office. Emaini. Come to gawk too. My punishment's over, you know. She looks away and crosses her arms carefully to hide her burned hands. Why were you holding a red hot cannonball? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. I shouldn't take my anger out on you. It's not your fault I punched my captain. It's as if the mere mention of the incident takes her back to Earth. Her face darkens with anger and a bitter snarl transforms her features. So maybe he shouldn't have insulted my aim. Like I don't know the difference between a smooth and rifled boar. I don't know. I killed some uh Bro Tai recently. So maybe. Um They were th the guys who uh made you do it. She shakes her head, quietly stewing. Seems drastic, he deserved it. What are you going to do now? I'm not reporting back to Wakoyo, that's for sure. I crewed on mercenary ships before this. Come to think of it, that suited me better. She grins impishly. Still a scramble root at heart, I guess. But I'm plenty experienced. Maybe I'll see if anyone's looking for an expert cannoneer. I could use an experienced uh, cannoneer on my crew. She looks you up and down, considering your offer. Don't take this the wrong way, but I only crew with captains I know. Either personally or by reputation. Well... I'm sure you're capable, but I don't know enough about you, yet. Her eyebrow quirks up in hopeful suggestion. Let's talk again when you've made a name for yourself. Okay. Damn. She's so picky. 
Potter House Guard. I'm sorry, but this area is strictly off limits. The young guard draws himself up uh, to his full height, crossing his arms. Can I just uh, look around inside? Sorry, my orders come from the Hazanui herself. What is this place? Whoa, that's a lot of bluff. Private property of the Royal Deadfire Company, that's what. Yeah, as you barely. Alright, I'm gonna leave. I guess. I still can't let you through. I guess I'm gonna leave. Officer's lunch. Yeah, anything in the docks we can do? Probably not. Look at so many naked dudes there. So unprofessional. Come on, brass little uh, soldier guys. You can do better than that. Lounge server. If this is about the Hazatoa tournament, I've got nothing to do with that, alright? I just serve the drinks. He holds up his hands with the exhausted resignation of a man who made uh, his case many times. Why do you work for the Royal Deathfire Company? They always pay on time. They're run by the Ranganui, so they should, right? He grins. Also, I'm from a town near Tekoa. Rautai's full of all kinds of kith, not just Amawa. But the Amawa have a long history at sea. They make up a lot of sailors and soldiers, including most of the ones that ended up here. He nods at vaguely... ...at the bar. I like the order some. What's this about Hazatoha? Some of the soldiers and sailors get to making unwise bets when they play. Mmm. He rolls his eyes. Like I said, I keep out of it. None of the regulars are looking for new opponents, though, if that's what you're asking. All the better for you, trust me. So, what Sorry, you got? I'm really only supposed to sell to captains working for the Royal Deadfire Company. Whatever. Meet her eye when you've got bad news. Shh, what? The last time I ship out with some soft hands. What a crappy grunts. bar. Fleet Master's Office. So far I like the Orleans the best. <laughs> I don't know. Every time I see an Orlan, they well, they tend to be the most reasonable ones. Fleet Master Vakoyo. Clear skies, my friend. My friend. Vakoyo crosses his arms and tips his head to the side. A long scar traces a path down his face, curving sharply where his cheek rises with a smile. Watcher, Captain of the Defiant, at your service. Not really at his service. Let's just see greetings. The boats of our decorated armada have orders which spread them thinly across the archipelago. Rawatai finds itself in need of a privateer. His brow rises uh, as he speaks uh, the word. Your ship, unmoored from deadfire politics, is an asset I would grasp with both hands. An arrangement can help us both. You will empty the seas of competition in exchange for profit. Oh, aren't you afraid that privateering will start a war? An official reckoning is drafted to account for every cannonball shot in the name of Rawatai. Our paperwork is most thorough. What? For every ship sunk, there is a legal justification. Our enemies will know the war is started on the day we fail to turn in our paperwork. Really? What bounties do you have available? A Scylla wave skipper is your first target. A pirate shirking any pretense of lawful conduct in the open seas. I'll take it. Most excellent. Asilla commands the Voyager River Dragon, which pesters a group of islands to the southwest of Port Maje. Or well, don't th haven't I My killed him already? Privateer. No, I'm still hunting. Oh no, we can't go in there. But... It's a bit unfortunate. I ship out with some soft-handed runt. So, powder house, sacred stair, 
and the Imperial Command. The Sacred Stair is uh, just another location over here. So we're getting to the Serpent's Crow. Eventually. Lens. What did he say? He didn't say the same thing. So bore me. A young woman with a bright, wide smile and eyes to match raises her hand and gives you a quick but in enthusiastic wave. Then, with an exaggerated look of embarrassment, she stops herself and crosses her forearms over her chest. I always forget that part. Say, you're the watcher of Cad Nua, aren't you? I've never met anyone famous before. <laughs> well. Except the Hazanui. She yells at me sometimes. <laughs> her grin widens impossibly. Are you always this excitable? I love it. It's just, this is my first time away from the rough country. An affectionate uh, Raetayan term for their homeland, rough refers to both uh, the unyielding rocky soils and uh, the storms that batter the mainland. I'd heard there were thick, green forests and sandy beaches without a storm in sight, but I never imagined this. She shakes her head in wonderment. You must have traveled lots, seen all sorts of amazing places. Tabormi folds her hands under her chin, watching you intently. Uh, why does this interest you so much? And had adventures you wouldn't believe. See the world, Sabormi. The travel is grand. I sure hope to. Seraphim, eyes close as he nods uh, along. So his eyes gleam with dark amusement. I love Rawatai, but it's hard to go a week without seeing storms or hearing about mudslides burying a village somewhere. Her buoyant expression sags, but only for a moment. Hazanui yells at you? Oh, all the time. <laughs> wow. She screams her face. Um, she screws her face uh, up into a look of mock seriousness. Still, she can't keep from smiling. Where's my white leaf? Stop daydreaming. So bore me, if you lose the letters again, I'll have you clean the latrines. <laughs> At this last comment, she leans close, her eyes wide and voice low with of. All this time, I didn't realize she knew my name. Oh, you're the quartermaster. Can you sell me something? Her face uh, scrunches up in disappointment. I really wish I could, but my supplies are for the Royal Deadfire Company and our allies. Has the newies orders. Damn. Maybe if you impress her or Atsura, they could make an exception. She smiles hopefully. Damn. So, right, I am soldier, the brass citadel. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. I can steal. Not like it really matters. Oh, we got the weapon master here. The archipelago is full of pirates. Watch out! <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, let me in. Azanui Karu is currently meeting at the palace in the Serpent's Crown. All right. So maybe we can check out the lower quarter. So we need to go to the palace. Like, that is what is happening here. But we're gonna check out the lower floor. The basement, or whatever that is. 
by the kitchen. Lower. They weren't that bad. I don't Running care too much about stealing. Oh, the prisoners Kabui? here. I can't think of anything else that goes with Hazanui. Hmm. Me neither. That's why I leave epics to the lore college. Criticism is easier than creation. Atsura? The man behind the desk regards you with an... Um, with attentive, unblinking eyes and a perfectly open expression. His, his smooth features make it hard to pinpoint his age, though the crinkles at the corners of his eyes suggest he's not especially young. He cocks his head, taking your measure. He pauses before speaking, just a little longer than seems normal. When he finally does, he crosses his forearms over his chest and gives you a slow, exquisitely courteous nod. The whole gesture is so perfectly choreographed that it seems he must have practiced it many times. Watcher Nui, the Lady of Katnua. In the flesh, he gives you a sleek half smile that reveals a a row of perfect pointed teeth. In his careful stare and the pause before he speaks, you recognize that he's studying you. I'm not one for ostentation, but your remarkable display at Queen's birth suggests that you are an individual with skills, not mere style. Uh, this is the part you tell me. What can I do for the Royal Deathfire Company, right? You are most canny. But I think we can do plenty for each other. His eyes shine with interest. It blinks perhaps for the first time since your conversation began. Rawatai has long maintained trade interests in the region. He gives you that unusually placid smile again. While our homeland is rich in saltpeter, the violent climate and rocky soils make it a poor source for most other basic staples. It's my business to look after the mainland's interests here. He spreads his hands wide to include his rather plain dim office. <laughs> Who did you cross to get stuck in this basement? He chuckles, a sound uh, as smooth as a uh, warm oil. <laughs> the Juana and the Valians decorate their latrines with gilding and coral, and the Principi cling to faded riches. He chops one hand uh, through the air dismissively. The most uncomfortable latrine, I say. I place little value in fancy trappings. And what about Luminous Adra? That is a Valian frivolity. Leave it to them to observe a substance that occurs nowhere else on Aora, and immediately set about pulverizing it for profit. A ripple of distaste passes over his features. I kinda like this guy so far. And what would you do with it? Nothing. We know too little about Luminous Adra to understand the consequences of ripping it out. He pauses and considers you. Perhaps you can help me keep them from doing more harm. Oh, you want me to disrupt that trade? What do you have in mind? The demand for Luminous Adra has sent the Valian Trading Company into a frenzy. Their expeditions grow too bold, and their officers too greedy. He puckers his lips as uh, though at the lack of discretion at the dinner party. Worse, their rapid expansion attracts pirates and threatens the outlying Juana tribes. This risks souring the Kahanga royals against all foreign involvement. He inclines his head uh, like he's about to let you in on a secret. But you can curtail their growth. This isn't about the welfare of the Deadfire. This is about them outpacing you. By snapping up land, we need to grow food and build ships for our people. Indeed. But our interests and dead fires are not mutually exclusive. He interlaces his long, well manicured fingers. The Valians have sent an expedition to Pokokahara, a storm wrecked island believed to house a vein of luminous. Mm. I hear you accomplished an incredible feat in restoring the luminous Adra near Port Maje. 
Oh, you heard that. He praises you again with those unblinking eyes. If your abilities allow you to do that, then perhaps you are also capable of the opposite. Find the luminous Adra at Poco Kahara. <laughs> Render it unusable to the Valians. Right. This should encourage them to develop the resources they have, rather than reaching for more. His eyes brought uh, rise to a rise a degree, both a request and an invitation. I thought you were concerned about disturbing Luminous Adra. Deeply. He furrows his brow, frowning deeply. Abruptly, his expression clears. But if a small sacrifice here will discourage the Valians from further ventures, then it is a worthwhile risk. What to say I don't tell the Valians about this? <laughs> For all their faults, they don't lack imagination. I'm confident they know of our intentions. Why would I help you? Because... Governors like Clario are a rare breed. Most of the Valian administrators care little for the well-being of the Juana. If the Valians claim Poco Kahara, it is the locals who will truly suffer. Oh, well, very well. I do not have the precise location of Poco Kahara, <laughs> but the tribe on the nearby island of Tikawara could probably help. I suggest starting there. Circle's a small, out-of-the-way island on your map. Now, what else can I do for you? You seem different uh, from the rest of the Royal Deathfire Company. How do you mean that? His eyes are attentive and utterly expressionless. Come on, you know exactly what I mean. He lowers his head, watching you all the while. Are you making advances at me? Oh! He still has not blinked. It's for the best. This would be a most inconvenient <laughs> time to begin an attachment. <laughs> Fucking perfect. Whatever. <laughs> well, he's not too different from them. He's just... Uh, more sneaky about <laughs> his intentions. Anyhow, uh, I guess we gotta go outside and uh, go toward the sacred stair. After that, Serpent's Crown is uh, the next step, I suppose. Also, we can just check out the island. The Kataka. That's nice too. The Kehu. Okay, let's go toward the Sacred Stair. Damn, this area is pretty huge. I wonder what the queen will say and do, because we did learn a lot. We know that the people are hungry, they are starving, I killed a, a lot of smugglers, uh, the water boys, uh, well, a lot of them died as well. Also, Valian Trading Company, Deathfire uh, Trading Company, we got all of those guys fighting over Luminous Adra, so... And I also managed to pet piss off uh, quite a few of them. I think I managed to piss off basically everybody at this point. Does anybody like me? Hmm, that's a good question. <gasps> I just have to check the reputation. We need to check our reputation because I don't think it's quite impeccable at this point. I need to do more sucking up the boss. Oh, this is a rather small place. Um, yeah. So, we have the Juana. They don't hate me. We got Children of the Dawn Stars. 
They kinda like me. We got Nikitaka. Well, overall somewhat positive. Gulet. Um they kinda like me a little bit. Principis and Petrena. <laughs> Ooh, the noble families. Oh yeah, kill one of them. We also got Delver's Rule Criminals. Do they like me? I don't know. Royal Deathfire Company. Uh, it's pretty neutral. Valiant Trading Company hates me. Port Maya likes me. So, we need to find the children of the Dunsters. They, they are the only ones that like me. It has to happen. And you guys... Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.